In the early 1980s, as the Tanting Base Institute for Further Education replaced Form 6s at Grenada's top secondary schools, Principal George Brazan, a national icon soon to play an even greater role in the nation, was telling his impressionable A-level freshmen that they were the cream of the crop on whose shoulders the young nation had a right to look to for future plaudits, for progress, and for fame. Brizan, a true progressive, would not have minded if the same speech, slightly altered, was delivered to the class of the Grenada Technical and Vocational Institute, only a few yards away. These youngsters were a little less academic, more interested in being tradesmen, arguably a more practical choice for a young nation than a raft of lawyers and psychologists. A few years later, 20 miles up St. George and the St. John coast from the IFE and the GTVI, a smaller group of inductees headed west and were to be given a similar introductory speech, probably with more similes than Brizan's oratory, but with definitely less fanfare. Sidney Charles was an affable Trinidad born churchman and his message to the young students would have been likely on the value of technical skills to them and to the nation. This was the quiet birth of the New Life organization. an institution for rejects, a school for dropouts. This was what the unkind echoes seemed to say anyway. Back then, it would have been a waste of time to debate who would be the outstanding successes if evaluated 10 years after graduation. Conventional education and conventional graduates always won out. Just look at the Island Scholar Prize, set up for academics. However, these days, technical and vocational skills are holding their own in results, and now a growing appeal in the country. The New Life organization has become a highly respected institution that has plugged, or maybe unplugged might be a better term, a worrying need for the country. From the start, we had a board of directors, and we had an executive director, first was Sister Reiner, she loved. Then you had um, Teddy Victor was for a time, gave up that. Then you had a few people, um, Mrs. Bernadine was one of them, she was the education minister. She said, I learned, I learned a lot from New Lord's dynamic, what its goal and what it's, because you see, not everybody has the same charisma. Um, and very often the education system doesn't help the people at the bottom sufficiently. So she did so. Then we had a, another sister, then Mr. Duncan, and now we have Margaret. She's a powerhouse. She's a nun. She's a wonderful person. Teaching in a school that is located in a rural community with, with less facilities, less opportunities than those who are in the cities, more or less resembles what New Look is doing here. And so a lot of the challenges I had in the school where I taught are not so different from some of those that I'm encountering here. But the good thing is that working in that environment and working very hard to ensure that these were young people who they thought, oh, they were less endowed in the sense academically they couldn't perform like their colleagues in the cities and then to bring them to that same level of performance. Um, for me now, it, it feels like I'm all the way back home where I started working. We, we use as our motto to turn swords into plowshares. From the start, therefore, Nulo has been 
what we call God-centered and human-hearted. And we said we would do our best for the young people of Grenada who suffered so much from the, the evils of the revolution. I always say this on every platform that I get that. But for New Look, the crime situation in Grenada would be different. Grenada would be a different place. I mean, a lot of us sometimes are a bit apprehensive, we are a bit fearful when we are going to some of the Caribbean countries that have high crime rates. Grenada would have been like that, but for New York. But this is something that I don't think people are very much aware of it and appreciate it. I don't think, I don't think so. There are individuals that do appreciate that and they do their little bit in their own individual way, but we are yet to see that national recognition and that national appreciation for the staff that work here at New Law. New Law has always had an interesting mix of Grenada's top educators, administrators, people whose commitment has nothing to do with love of money or profit. It was the toughest place I had worked, no two ways about it, you know. Lots what you'd imagine, a large group of young men like that, it was predominantly male at my time. It was 75% male, 25% female. But I mean, every day there were incidents, you had to hold firmly and be on top of things very firmly all day long so that the correct teaching and learning could take place and um, they could progress in their various areas. But the reason why I got involved there was because I came home and I wanted to make a meaningful contribution. I had been working with the Ministry of Education and the government of Grenada at the time, which was the revolutionary government, um, as an advisor in science and technology. And when I came back, I left after that period, 1995, um, excuse me, 1975, I left um, Grenada again, having been here between the period of the revolution. I came in 81 and left again in 85. When I came back in 1989, I thought I needed not to go back into the ministry and get involved in the book work, but indeed look for a project or program that I could make a meaningful contribution to. People were really struggling to get somewhere. And I went out, I was invited out to see the project, which I did. And once I visited, I knew that is where I would want to be, because that was where the tire met the road, where people needed opportunity and chance. During the time that I spent there, we were able to do some external exams, such as City and Gills, English and Math, especially for the students who were in the hospitality program. But presently, they've reached the stage where people are doing external exam in um, computer technology and also the national training awards and um, national vocational qualifications. So that really is the situation has, is at a point where the students are becoming more and more competitive or able to compete in the in work environment in Grenada and, of course, within the wider region a life-changing experience, especially in my own country, where you're not aware of these factors. You just assume everybody has the ability to get to a school, convent, wherever they go in, and that things are going, not at all, not at all. There's a percentage of people who are in a desperate struggle to really make something of themselves. And as we know, the education is critical in that regard. The, the world is not realizing that it is not enough to know. It is as important to do. And New Law, in a way, is combining both of those things. And the old feeling that many people had that New Law was a place for people who had no brain or very little of it or didn't use it well, um, that is certainly being dismantled. And people are coming to realize that students, a number of students who are presently and have been um, at New Law are students who have managed quite well in the so-called academic life in, in secondary school and are choosing to do um, practical skills to make them more employable and to build their self-esteem. Because I think we, would all, we should all understand that the most important part of the whole New Law program is the, um, the ADP, the Adolescent Development Program, which concentrates on building core skills and building people in addition and then moving on to the additional um, other areas. New Law's timely entry into Grenadian lifeblood 
was modeled after Servoil, the Trinidad and Tobago Life Center, started by the Caribbean Catholic leader Father Gerald Panton. Not that it matters, we gave them so much. Why not take inspiration for a life-changing institution? In order to work at New Look, you have to be versatile, you have to be flexible, you have to be able to understand people, and you have to be a people's person. Then it was very different to now. I can assure you that at the beginning, you have to be able to multitask, because when New Look got started, there were not much instructors as we have now and the, the, the jobs demand of you that you are able to do more than one thing. Sometimes you are in the classroom, sometimes you are out helping outside with the skill areas. You know, that's what it was like then. Now we are more in a situation where everybody that comes in have to specialize. And um, the trainees that we get right now, they are very different, I could assure you that. Prior to now, you have persons who used to cooperate a lot. You speak to them and it's easy to get them to, to move. Now it's much harder. Well, I would say that it is the most satisfying experience for me because before becoming the skills coordinator, which I've been for the past four years, I was the hospitality arts teacher and um, just having to come in contact with the students and they coming in more or less empty, um, self-esteem low, their confidence are low, um, not knowing what to expect and you taking them from one level and bringing them to the next, it is the most satisfying and rewarding experience. For me, when I get a phone call saying that Miss I'm employed here, um, that is a plus. It's better than a paycheck. Quite a bit of attention was paid to that, the personal development of staff. And I remember we sent Peter James to do the ADP program in Trinidad. I myself had done it. And that was an experience because, of course, um, Nulo is a, a offshoot of Serval in Trinidad. Yes. And Serval under Father Gerald Pantin. So I spent a couple of weeks down there, just living on the compound, going to classes, looking at them, looking how they manage, following on with the ADP in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And when I came back up now, that gave me a good idea of how to further develop what was here. You know, we have an opportunity for everybody, any and everybody who wants to continue to learn a skill. We have an opportunity for them to do that. We have persons who would have finished, graduated from secondary school, in some cases, some people would have gone to TAM CC and they do come here. Um, we have others who, who haven't even finished primary school. So we have a wide range of persons. What we look for is that once the individual is willing to want to improve him or herself, we give that person a chance. A lot of the times children go into technical skills and not able to cope, right, because they don't know how to work along with others. So what I do is we encourage them to be the best that they can be. So we talk about things that will um, help them to be better persons, how to respect themselves, how to respect others, how to aim for what is high, right? And not just what is high, how to continue to grow and develop to be the best young person that they can be. One of the things I want you to note is that at Nulo we try not to compare them with other people. But what we try to let them know is that they have their own potential. So instead of looking at what others can do, do what they know that they can do and achieve the best for them, not for others. Shakespeare's Brutus said there's a tide in the affairs of men, which, taking up the flood, leads on to fortune. Only a beautiful way of saying, make the very best of what you have when opportunities present themselves. Enter the Maria Horser Society, an exceptional Caribbean-based altruistic group looking to provide means and support to inspired organizations. Indeed, there is a tide in the affairs of men. A lot of you know we look after young people. 
But for those of you who don't know, Dr. Pierre also look after young people, even younger than those we look after here. And there's so much responsibility on her. And for her to make the first move to us in order to secure the future of the young people who are under her care, it made us feel very, very much honored. And that was the beginning of the conversation. In 2014, we had a whole team of members coming from the Maria Hoda Memorial Trust from Barbados to come and see for themselves what Dr. Pierre had told them. So the story was just like the Samaritan woman that says, you know, we believe, yeah, we have seen what you have told us, but now we have come to believe, not just because you told us, but because we have seen it with our eyes. And I remember the comment Colette made that day after they told the facility, and she said, this is something we would like to support. And that was the beginning of the conversation in 2014, February. I remember that day very well. And since then, the conversation never stopped. This is actually my first visit to uh, New Low, to the site. Um, I've seen pictures of how the site has developed and I'm very excited to, with the uh, Governor General to, to cut the lovely Blue River that I could just see in the background. Uh, but I was very much inspired by, by my niece Colette and, and fellow trustee about her enthusiasm for this project. And the first thing she did when we walked in, she said, let me show you what it looked like. And she took me around there, and, and it was just and, and that excitement of, of that moment. And I can see from what was to what is, and what was can also we can look at doing, making further investment here, which I'm sure we will do. What an incredible day. What an exciting time for Nulo. The Maria Holder Memorial Trust, a registered charity in Barbados, is engaged in tremendous work. Their donations have had a direct impact and positive impact on the lives of vulnerable people in our region. The trust works in the areas of education, health, poverty alleviation, and disaster relief. Its target groups are children, youth, the elderly, and those in difficult or vulnerable situations. They are open to assisting new and innovative projects aimed at helping those in need, such as NULO, because their original focus was on education and now they have expanded outside of ed the real education into NULO, which is skills development. I commend the Maria Holder Memorial Trust for their generosity, compassion, and thoughtfulness in reaching out in such a tangible and meaningful way the most vulnerable people of our Caribbean countries, and that includes Barbados. <laughs> <laughs> I am especially pleased that Grenada continues to benefit from this organization. In grateful appreciation to the Maria Holder Memorial Trust for your generous financial donation to New Lou, towards the Maria Holder Hospitality Center. We could not have done it New Law's young students have risen to the challenge. A mixed bunch of extroverts and nerds, budding scientists and technical whiz kids, prize winning chefs of tomorrow. They yet in many ways the kids you'll find in regular secondary schools, maybe a little wiser through experience. Future leaders of tomorrow. My interest in plumbing, I think, well, actually I did healthcare, childcare, but I think plumbing, having plumbing as a skill, because if you go out there, you will get like a job, maybe. Although you have like, if you have, I could be doing healthcare or some opportunity come up. It's like I could do a home job and then still have plumbing on the side. I don't regret doing plumbing. No wrong with doing plumbing. You make your color that people do. That's why you have your skill to do things for yourself. The hospitality industry in college is totally different to what is it now is in your law. Um, they're more focused more on theory parts 
you know. And I didn't. I am a person that like hands on work. Right. I'm more skillful. So that is the reason why I chose Nulo over college. So I didn't complete college, but I complete Nulo. It's teaching you more about the outer work and how to face everything out there in life because life is not very easy these days. I started working here in 2010 in St. Andrew's Life Center, which is about life skills training. And our life skills is, is far different from what they do in Palmis. We do anything that is good for life, how to cope with life situations, and you know, yes, all that concerns life. As long as you have life, you need these skills with each year to be able to go on with life. Hollis, Mr. Keller Map is Nulo's most well-known graduate. So right now we are we are new law and this was an institution that I once was a part of, you know, with a student here. And I remember my, my class being downstairs here. I did electrical and I did plumbing. Here used to be the library, AP over in that section. Um, we had um, hospitality arts over here, woodwork at the back, plumbing over there. Yeah, and now it's, now it's being developed. I see we have a new building here. I feel good to see that. And I want to tell people that coming to this, this institute actually did a lot for me, you know. Helped me focus on, on the skills that I have. Because before this, I never knew that I could uh, build anything or put anything together or maybe fix anything besides my music. Now today, while I'm building my studio, I can literally actually do everything. A piece of everything, you know. Piece of electrical, piece of plumbing, you know, plaster walls and I'm literally building all the workstations and, and putting down the, the wooden flooring and, and doing all of those things and actually study also the acoustic treatment and stuff like that. So I'm building all of those things on my own and this is one of the places that gave me those skills. So besides being an artist, your skills is very important. So I just want to say to everybody that New Law is not just for the dropout or whatever it is. It's for you to develop your skill and don't let nobody feel that Having a skill is something wrong because where the Prime Minister live, he need a mason, a, a, a plumber, you understand what I'm saying? He need, he need an electrician to build that place. We are the builders, we are the creators, the skillful people, you know? So feel free to come here and to further your, your education in your skill sets. Uh, I feel so blessed when I see trainees like Mr. Killer, knowing that I was one of those instructors that influenced the positive values, yeah? Because you might not imagine, you know, some trainees that came to me in the early times, uh, the self-motivation was way down there, yes? And sometimes they come and they start giving little problems and you have to pull them aside and talk to them and, you know, get them on board with what you want to, right? And that was what I did with him. And today I can see great Great things, yes? So I'm proud of my product. Yes? <laughs> of course. Bless the love and time. I'm of my products. I'm very proud of it. Bless the love and time. Bless the love and time. My mother sent me to private secondary school. You understand? And I mean, the education was good. It was coming in. I went to, 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 to New York. I came back as a, as, a, as a young man. And everything that I saw outside there, wasn't what it was on television. It was, it was different for me. So I came back home a little disappointed. But when I when I when I when I came here to Nulo after that trip, I came here to Nulo and when I came to Nulo I said you know what? The education in school and the education here was two different kind of education. The education here is more about you and your skill what you could do, you understand, with the hands and mind.
as I settled down, I realized that the that the teachers at Newlo really had a, a hard job. <laughs> no, that is one of the first things because I grew with mommy, so you had to have respect. You know, my 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 upbringing was a real strict one. You know, so when I see the the work that the that the, that the teachers had to do or what they had to deal with, you know, it was one of I could remember that I said, "Boy, wait, now these teachers have been hard yet." <laughs> you know, because as I see the, the children at that time, you know, is bigger kids, you know. Um, more mature teenagers, Mr. Anne and Wine. You know, she was very, very, she's this kind of calm person, you know. Well, you didn't get to really spend the day with her, you know, but you see her very often, you know, making sure and checking that everybody's alright, make sure the school's running right, you know, so she was a very good person. Um, getting to know her after, after um, New Law. I realized why she was so, you know, humble and had that kind of character about her. She's a very, you know, spiritual person. She was a good person. New law officials are a little modest when talking about their grads. They leave it up to the employers. Well, Jason started. He came out of New Law and he worked one or two places here and there. And he started with me as a commie cook. And I spotted a tremendous natural talent with Jason. So I got him working with a lot of my foreign chefs. <clears throat> then I sent him overseas numerous occasions on various stages. Six weeks, two months, three months to work at top restaurants in England and to expose him to what our DNA is, so to speak, in Spice Island Beach Resort. And then he developed himself into a fine young man. And today he's my head chef. And he has been my head chef for the last four or five years. And prior to that, he was my senior sous chef. So he came up very fast. And um, I spotted <clears throat> the natural talent in him. So credit has to be given initially to where he got his initial training, which is the new, new law organization. Um, the rest is history, but I have to give New Law a lot of credit because that is where he got his culinary um, introduction to the culinary skills that he now has. And um, I'm so happy that he is my head chef in a AAA Five Diamond Resort in one of the top hotels in the world. And I'm very happy. First of all, they provide me with, with the basic, basic um, skills. Uh, that's uh, in the food and nutrition department. Yes. I, when I entered New Law, in the, it was around 92, uh, two, um, two courses which was Mason and Food and Nutrition. Okay. And I found that, I started off with the Masonry, but I found that, that the Food and Nutrition, I love cooking. Mm -hmm. And I think food, uh, the cooking will take me really further. Right. So I said, well, I will finish the course and bounce around St. George's, all the different restaurants just to get to know all the different cuisine and things like that. Right. And then I'll hit the hotels. Right. So I did that. I worked at Rudolph, I worked at Nutmeg, all the modern little... Um, yeah. Going way back. Yeah. So, and then I hit uh, Rex. Mm -hmm. the, I learned a lot there with Indian food, um, Thai food, all the things like that. Uh, but the money was not Okay. My take so um, I left there and I came to Spice right. and there Spice um, when I met Sorison he told me uh, in here the sky's the sky's the limit. But I tell him I said I'm not I don't think it's the limit. I think that's where you, you lift off. Right. And he saw my performance. He said I was really interested in cooking and he sent me a couple of times away to um, study different. Uh, Proper uh, restaurants, things like Michelin Star, one um, Rosette, things like that. Yeah, and they, uh, I came back because once once he sent me, you know what I'm going like a sponge. I want to come back just to extract. So there he saw he saw leadership, he saw skill, and then gave me. Um, I started off um, at the bottom. Yeah, I started there just as a demi a demi chef, and I worked my way up. I worked a lot with um, different 
um, foreign chef, executive chef, and there I just keep sucking from them. Yeah, different skills, different techniques, and I took it off from there. And now I'm in charge of running the kitchen uh, staff of 32. Plus I have my assistant, uh, ex senior chef, sous chef, Brenda. Yeah, and she's doing helping me excellent, doing an excellent job. I started at 88. I became permanent um, the 15th of November in 88. I started doing dishes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I started doing dishes. I do the pots, I do the plates and all of that. And in and between, I came up to the chefs and assist. Try to do sandwiches, ask questions, and, and try to do little things with them and, and walk along with them. And by then, I came up to be working in the pantry. That's with the salads and, and, and so, sandwiches and so. Um, after that, I walk along with all the different chefs that came. Um, then I was promoted to chef de party. Um, worked there again, did my best. I started doing nights. And then another chef came on and he said, well, um, let's try you on another field because you're good at that field now. So I came on to the morning. So I started doing breakfast and I started doing lunches, which I'm doing up to this day. So, um, with that, I worked doing barbecues and all of that. We have barbecues on a Sunday. I work on the barbecue grill, making sure the guests are happy. Um, then I was promoted again to junior sous chef. Brenda started out of New Law as a young, young, young lady and her route was the same. She's been on a few overseas stints. She's trained in my kitchen under foreign chefs. And she is just fiercely loyal, fiercely talented. She has a lot of good kitchen management skills. And she's been my senior sous chef for the last two, three years. First went to Nulo. I left um, McDonald College. And at the time, I didn't have anything to do, so my mom said, well, you have to find something to do. I went to Nulo. I enrolled to do sewing. <laughs> and um, in, in and out of the sewing class, I decided, um, one day I went into the kitchen and the young lady who was there needed some assistance in helping in the talk shop. So I started sneaking out <laughs> and going to the talk shop and helping out. Um, but I must say, um, it, it, has, it has been well, and I think um, at the time, we didn't have much at Nilo, but we make use of what we had, and today I see what it has done for me, because I'm here since 88, up to this day. Um, so, I would say it was good being there. And I will encourage anybody to, who wants to be in that field to go there. Um, that would help them. And once you have a love for that or passion for that, for cooking, you will make it there. I have a lot of them who pass through Neuro. And I find that the grounding that they get in Neuro is extremely well. And I believe that the way Neuro is going, which is revamping its whole organization, bring it up a lot of notches. Thanks to a lot of um, donations they've been getting, contributions, grants from outside organizations. And, um, and they are up to speed and they are where we would like to see them in terms of becoming relevant. But more so today, by having that big upgrade, which I'm sure you've seen what is happening through grants it provides the opportunity to better train a lot more young individuals to take their rightful place in one of Grenada's three main um, sources of income. As we know, tourism, agriculture, and manufacturing. I hire new low grads on an ongoing basis. I have, at the end of every term, I, I bring in new low grads, or not grads, new low students to do a stage in my hotel for six, eight weeks, every year. And then 
I choose the best ones that I think can fit into my organization. So this is ongoing with New Law in particular and of course other organizations, training organizations. Because you know, you do have turnover and you are still looking for good quality students coming in who graduate. So I take them in, EMAP, some of them after one year, they come down, they do a, a, a six, eight weeks a stage with me. They come back when they graduate. If I know that I am seeing something out of you, I give you the opportunity and hire you. A lot of them do make a change in their lives as they come through here, which we do appreciate. And that is one thing that keeps me personally going. I can't give up on them. Some of them may give trouble, but with time, you see them changing. Or when they finish new law, you see who they have changed to become, and that gives me great joy. I can't give up. I don't want to take any slap from any of them, but I know definitely one day they're going to make it. It reinforced my openness and freedom to life, and my, my value of people, that each person has a gift. Because when I saw what the students had done from ground, from scratch, and had made of themselves, you know, most of them have, um, qualified themselves, past students that you never thought, you know, they, they, have, they have established their, their own personhood and their own, their own position in life. And they have shared that in their different villages. So across Grenada, you know, in fact, there's one who phoned me a few years ago, and he's now employed. He told me with some big Chinese um, construction um, in, in building and going on in St. Lucia, he told me. And as soon as he's finished that, he understands they're coming to Trinidad, and he's coming back to see me. So, you know, they've kept in touch. They've, re they've realized that New Law, not me in particular, but New Law gave them the opportunity, and that's where Bishop Charles um, his presence, his vision for his, to be able to see their need. The, the, word was, the words he used was it to meet the needs of the disillusioned youth of the day. Because the, the, the court the regime had built up their hopes to, you know, a certain way of life and, and improvement of life as they thought. But uh, also uh, being in St. George, in St. David's Secondary School, St. David's is the political part of the day. And the young people there did not, did not, grew not, did not take it, sit, sit down to take it. You know, they, they just lived, they lived for their country and their, and their belief. So it, it, it made me realize that every person, every, not, not, not well, even section of the, of the population, each, each, each um, student coming from different parts of, of Grenada had something to offer to the whole. And, and, and that, that for me has kept that that sense of openness to life. And now, at this stage, I realize that that's what is life is about. Life is oneness. Life is life is love. You know, once you know, they, they shared from their heart whatever they had, and they, they, they bring they bring in whatever little they had at home. We used to grow lettuce. We had a competition, and they, you know, old boots, or old shoes, anything that they had fill it up on a big head of lettuce on top, you know, and uh, it, it made them realize they could, they have, there's that creativity, that, that sense of who they are within them to be able to, and although at the time I didn't, I didn't know that um, by reading or, it's just something that opened in life and look back and re realize since that what I, what I believed and saw written then confirmed the whole essence of what life is about. Early part, like Mr. The, um, uh, Reverend Peter King of the Presbyterian Church, he, he died early, of, in a, a year or two. And eventually, the one from the Methodist Church, the Anglican Church, you know, they kept, the only, the, per, the, first, the last person and the strongest person to stay on was Lloyd Noel. And I, I wrote him a few years, uh, a year or two ago, to thank him again as he looked in hindsight, only to discover that he had died a few months before. And I didn't, I hadn't known. But um, and Teddy, well, Teddy just uh, died too in the course of time. So I think I'm the, must be the last Mohawk. <laughs> so. I've had the cause to share a lot of tears. Um, I remember one graduation. Um, 
so much journeys but getting up there to say thank you to Miss O'Farrell for what I've done for them. Um, by the way, I was just doing what I'm supposed to do, just being the teacher, supporting them in whatever way I can. And just them getting up there on the stage and saying thank you and the little gifts sometimes, you know. And some of them just pick up the phone to call and say, Miss, I just want to say thank you for helping me along the way. You've really made a difference in my life. That is so satisfying. Sometimes my mom would say to me, oh, I met one of your trainees in Greenville and they just tell her how much they appreciate me. And this often gives me a lot of goosebumps. The skills issue for me is, is critical. Um, we are in fact now in the, in the fourth industrial revolution. And if you look at the Caribbean and you think about skills, and I, I, I find the the World Economics Forum um, Global Competitive Index a useful framework to have this conversation. Skills is an area where we are very much behind in the region. I have said it before and I say it again. Um, I am deeply concerned about our obsession with subjects rather than skills. Uh, I find it <laughs> difficult to accept that we could go on and on for bragging rights about who gets the most subjects in our schools and not worry about how we're connecting with the labor market and what these children are going to do. These students are going bright as they are when they finish school. Because what I see before me is rising unemployment, especially amongst our youth. In many of our countries, the youth unemployment rate is double the national average. So that concerns me. And for me, it is very clear that um, skills is an area. So you can go into some countries and you still can't find plumbers, you still can't find Masons, um, the, the really good ones are in high demand and the other ones, well, let's just not talk about that. On behalf of the New Life organization, the board of directors, the management, staff and trainees, both past and present, we would like to express our sincerest gratitude, first and foremost to God for how far he has brought this organization, for the lives he has enabled us to touch and our own lives being touched in the process. We would like to say a big thank you to the government of Grenada, um, most especially to the Honorable Emmanuel Pierre, Honorable Pamela Moses, um, to the Right Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell and the administration for responding to our calls for support for New Law. Um, the government has reached out to us in a way that we are really appreciative of. And we also appreciate the collaboration the collaborative hand that government has extended to us in the skills training programs. In a special way, also would like to say thank you to the Maria Hoda Memorial Trust. Just a year ago, we had only the hospitality um, center. Now, through a second project sponsored by them, we have the whole facility completed, and the downstairs now houses the hospitality um, bakery room, storeroom, there is a place for IT test center. We have the computer engineering department, the healthcare, uh, with a sick bay and a private meeting room. None of this would have been possible without the support of the Maria Hoda Memorial Trust. And so we say a big thank you to you, Mr. Christopher Hoda, and the whole team. We really appreciate the love that you have shown Nulo. And we really look forward also to more. We also like to thank all the businesses and the companies that support our trainees, both for internship and for full-time jobs. Please continue to support us, and we will be more than encouraged to continue doing more with the young people of Grenada, Kariku, and Petit Martinique. God bless all of you. Palmist, the home of Nulo, lies on the western side of our island, literally on the coast. A beautiful journey for those coming up from the capital and a ropey, winding and unwinding twisty road for the students commuting from the interior. However, for those from Guave, Grand Roy, Concord and other parts of St. John, New Low is now part of their epidermis. A living, breathing poor that has produced super chefs Jason and Brenda and superstar Hollis and so many more among us shining so brilliantly. So go west, young man and young woman.